Hey Freedom Fighters, how's it going? This is Kala here at Students for a Free Tibet International Headquarters bringing you SFT TV. SFT TV is your source for news, information, and updates from SFT HQ right here in New York City. Today is Monday, June 23rd, 2008, and here is the news. This is from Canada's Globe and Mail. Lhasa's monks all but vanish in Chinese crackdown. Severe restrictions, including checkpoints and surveillance, imposed since wave of anti-government protests. In March, exiles say, the pilgrims returned to Lhasa, near the, uh, in front of the Potala Palace yesterday, spinning their prayer wheels and prostrating themselves in front of the Dalai Lama's ancient palace on a mountaintop in Lhasa. For two days, the Buddhist pilgrimage, pilgrims, excuse me, have been pushed to the sidelines to make room for the Olympic torch relay in Lhasa. The traditional pilgrimage route at the Potala Palace was unceremoniously shut down in one of many security measures by Chinese authorities, even though a month-long Buddhist festival has drawn thousands of pilgrims to the Tibetan capital. But as pilgrims returned, a mystery remained. Where are Lhasa's monks? A visit yesterday to Sarah Monastery, the second biggest Buddhist monastery in Tibet found that its 550 monks had virtually disappeared from sight. Most buildings and outdoor areas at the monastery were nearly empty, and only about 10 monks could be seen. Three days of travel around Lhasa, the first permitted visit by Canadian journalists since the Tibetan uprising in March, found that the monks were almost entirely gone from the city streets, even in the historic quarter around the Jokong Temple, the holiest temple in Tibetan Buddhism. Tibetan exiles who have contacts in Lhasa say monks have been subjected to severe restrictions for most of the past three months since a wave of anti-government protests have erupted in March. Quote, There are checkpoints and random checks of identification cards throughout Lhasa, said Sering Shakya, a prominent Tibetan writer and professor at the University of British Columbia. There are police stationed at exits of all the monasteries, and they check IDs and register them. It is deterring a lot of monks. Lhasa residents are finding it difficult or impossible to phone Sara Monastery to reach relatives who are monks there, Mr. Shakya said. It is a security measure. The monks are the most vocal in the protests, and they are the targets of the current campaign. They are under careful surveillance. Lobsang Chumphil, a 77-year-old monk who heads the government-controlled administration at Sarah Monastery, denied that there were any restrictions on the monks. Quote, they can go downtown to do shopping, they can go to the market to buy vegetables, he said yesterday, but didn't explain why so few monks were visible on the streets or in the monastery itself. After giving brief answer answers to five questions from foreign journalists, the monk was hustled away by Chinese officials who refused to permit further questions. They told journalists, journalists to hurry to the next event for the government-sponsored visit. No other access to the monks were permitted, aside from a guided tour of the monastery's historical relics. Sarah Monastery, whose monks helped lead the protest that began in Lhasa on March 10th, has remained under tight security since then. Several uniformed policemen were posted at the monastery's entr um, entrance yesterday, carrying radios. China deployed a massive security operation in Lhasa on the weekend as it sent the Olympic flame on a two-hour dash through the city. Invited guests were allowed into the opening and closing ceremonies, but most ordinary Tibetans were kept far away from the Olympic flame as it was carried on a shortened run through the Tibetan capital on Saturday morning. Thousands of paramilitary police and regular police kept a close eye on the event, which passed without incident, despite government reports that Tibetan separatists were trying to sabotage it. 
Much of the city, aside from the torch route, were almost deserted. Residents were told to stay inside their homes, unless they had special pass allowing them to cheer for the torch. Hundreds of shops along the torch route were shuttered for the day. Tibetans who ventured outside were kept behind steel barriers on the side streets. A small group of foreign journalists invited to attend the relay were not permitted to see any of the nine kilometer run except the beginning and the end. They had to pass through a barbed wire checkpoint and other secured checks before they were permitted to attend the opening ceremony. By the end of the relay, the Olympic flame was greeted by a carefully choreographed display of ethnic dancing and rhythmic flag waving from thousands of school children and other handpicked spectators. Chinese officials took advantage of the Olympic event to launch another verbal blast at the Dalai Lama, whom they blame for the unrest in Tibet. Quote, we will certainly be able to totally smash the splittest schemes of the Dalai Lama clique, Zheng Ching Li, the hardline boss of the Tibetan Communist Party, said in a speech to the crowd at the end of the torch relay. He spoke through an interpreter because he is not fluent in the Tibetan language. His attack on the Dalai Lama was the latest sign that Beijing has no intention of negotiating seriously with the Tibetan spiritual leader, whose representatives held preliminary talks with Chinese officials last month. The second round of talks have been postponed at China's insistence. Another senior Chinese official fired a fresh salvo at the Dalai Lama this weekend. Quote, He has been hiding the truth from the Tibetan people, said Palma Trinli, executive chairman of the Tibetan regional government at a press conference in Lhasa. His aim is to turn Tibet back to a system of feudal serfdom. He has not brought any benefit to the Tibetan people in the past, nor will he bring them any benefit in the future. Critics say the Chinese authorities had put Lhasa virtually under martial law. Quote, With the way it has militarized the Tibetan capital, China might as well parade the torch through Lhasa atop a tank, said Han Shan, an activist with the group Students for Free Tibet. Human rights groups have also been, were, excuse me, are also critical of the decision to parade the torch through the Tibetan capital. Quote, this is a provocative decision with the blessing of the International Olympic Committee. Could aggravate tensions and undermine the fragile process to find a peaceful long-term resolution for Tibet and the region. Sharon Hom, Executive Director of Human Rights Watch China, said in a statement, The government's insistence on parading the torch through Lhasa can only undermine the respect and trust required for a genuine dialogue process with the Dalai Lama. And now for the Tibetan language version of um, this newscast, I'll bring it over to Naung Paldin. Tamola <laughs> Mixigani Tasha uh Pugesel 
Kyanaki Pombo any Penalola any Pebe any Communist Party Toshu Zhang Chingli Koranki Konsacho Dani Konsachogi Chinju Lokchu Badinzu Sama Meosu Sametangi and any Mitsama in the Kelenchido any Pebe the Student for Free Tibet activist Han Shangi Korangi Tanda Janashungi uh Olympic torch uh has like ki kidukov so on Tadik Chidandana uh Olympic torch Koran Olympic torch the tenga like kina kidusare she should do Tarinki ni uh Tezami Tujina Magically, you're a friend, 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 you're a friend,